Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Eric from EGATech. Being a Samsung user for quite a number of years, I wanted to find out the performance difference from Samsung flagships released in the past couple of years. In this video, guys, I'm going to be showing you five such phones. So starting from the left, I've got the Note 10 Plus, the Note 20 Ultra, the S21 Ultra, the S22 Ultra and the S23 Ultra. So I guess it's pretty clear which one is the odd one out because the S21 Ultra phone has more of a rounded look when compared to the other Ultra phones. And the S21 Ultra is the only phone in this lineup that doesn't have its own built-in S Pen. Though it does support an S Pen, there is no S Pen slot on the phone itself. So what are we waiting for guys? Let's get this Samsung Ultra Roundup started. So in terms of the RAM and storage guys, all of the models that I've got here has 12 GB of RAM. And aside from the S23 Ultra, all of them actually has 256 GB of storage. My S23 Ultra with the UFS 4.0 storage has 512 GB of storage. All of the phones that you've got here are the Snapdragon models except for the S21 Ultra. I was not lucky enough to get my hands on the Snapdragon model of the S21 Ultra. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is actually the odd man out. The 120Hz refresh rate only started with the Note 20 Ultra, but you had to keep the Note 20 Ultra at just 1080p in order to enable it. But for the rest of the phones, I've kept them at the Quad HD resolution. So just to show you guys, this is the screen resolution that I'm going to be running the test at. So they're all at Quad HD. Though of course, as I mentioned, the Note 20 Ultra only supports 120Hz at 1080p. The rest does support the high refresh rate of up to 120Hz. Alright guys, so I'm going to be starting off with the Antutu benchmark test, which is 9.6.1 on all of these phones. So starting the test in 3, 2, 1. So these are my scores. So as you can see, of course, the S22 Ultra wins it with a score of 1,227,911. Followed by the S22 Ultra at 881,748. And kind of a surprise here because the Note 20 Ultra with the Snapdragon actually beat out my S21 Ultra with the Exynos chipset by around 2,000 points. So 673,997 on the Note 20 Ultra. 671628 on the S21 Ultra. While on the Note 10 Plus, it's still a very respectable 526,111. So as you can see guys, even by uh, just a couple of years ago, the performance of the S23 Ultra is actually double that of the Note 20 Ultra and the S21 Ultra. I'll try to get my hands on Snapdragon version of the S21 Ultra so I can redo the test. But for those of you who actually has the Snapdragon S21 Ultra, let me know what scores you're getting on your device. So now, of course, these are expected scores, but let's go ahead and check out the temperature, guys. 38.4 degrees on the Note 10 Plus, 39 on the Note 20 Ultra. The hottest phone was the Exynos carrying S21 Ultra at 41.2. A decent 38.7 on the S22 Ultra. And the coolest phone among these five Samsung flagships is the S23 Ultra at 37.9 degrees Celsius. This is mainly due to the very efficient Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 optimized for Galaxy chip that is the heart of the S23. Ultra. Battery drain is uh, pretty respectable across the board. 4% on the S23 Ultra, 6% on the S22 Ultra, again 4% on the S21 Ultra, 4% on the Note 20 Ultra, and on the Note 10 Plus is around 5%. These are just small differences. You can expect decent battery life across the board. So I'll let the phones cool down a bit. Then we can do a Geekbench test. So we're just going to be testing the CPU performance of all these five phones. Alright guys, so now on to the Geekbench test. So starting the Geekbench test in 3, 2, 1. Till I get up, time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us. And love is all we'll ever trust. Yeah, no, I don't want to waste what's left. Too much 
Again, as expected guys, the S23 Ultra wins both the single core and multi-core score. 1923 single core, 4952 on the multi-core. In second place, we've got the S22 Ultra, 1257 single core score, 3288 multi-core. The S21 Ultra with the Exynos chip actually beat out the Note 20 Ultra. Uh, with a single core score of 716 though it did lose out on the multi-core score with just 2356 so it's actually a lower multi-core score when compared to the Note 10 Plus. The Note 20 Ultra has 711 and 3151 respectively. The Note 10 Plus 570 and 2376. And again guys just in case you can't see the scores on the phone screen itself here are the graphs of the results that I'm getting. And as usual guys, uh, let me know what scores you're getting on your device. Uh, these are just the results I'm getting, but of course you might be getting different ones. Okay, so now we have a rough idea of how each of these phone performs in some of the benchmarks available on the Google Play Store. I'm now going to be doing real world testing. I'm going to be using these phones to play some of the most popular games out right now, primarily Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail actually just came out. So I wanna see how each of these phones will perform and if you're actually going to be needing the latest and greatest to run any of your favorite games. So let me know what game you want me to try out on some of these older Samsung flagship and I will try my best to include those games in my next round of testing. So until then guys, a sub would be highly appreciated. Please like and subscribe, hit that bell icon notification and see you all on my next one.